Hey guys, and welcome to the next episode of Feed the Beast Tutorials. In today's episode, guys, we're going to be going over this complex looking thing. It may look complex, but it's pretty simple. And it's basically going to be showing you guys how you can create a really good infinite power um, system. So it's completely renewable resources. You don't need to you know, contribute any coal to the system or anything. It's completely renewable. And it's basically using tree oil from the trees that you can get. And how you can then process that to use in compression dynamos and steam dynamos and how you can use that to create an infinite early game power source. So first things first guys you want to find a little bit of an area to do it. I'm hopefully going to try and do the tutorial in you know in a bit of a neater fashion than that. But you're basically I think you'd probably your best bet is going to be using something like spruce trees to get your tree oil since all the trees basically producing a different amount of tree oil um, from the arboreal extractor. So what you're basically going to need is couple of trees, like I said I'd recommend spruce trees, so I'm just going to grow a couple here. And what you're going to want to do is basically get the some arboreal extractors and you want to place four of them around each tree. So you'll notice now I've placed these arboreal extractors around this tree and you'll notice that they've sort of all lit up green and stuff. That basically indicates that the system's working okay. Oops, I put him in the wrong place. So I'll put one there, one there, one, not one there one next to the tree and another one right next to the tree and you'll notice they've all lit up and they've gone got a little orange animation going and that basically indicates they're all working and they're basically extracting resin from the trees now i'm gonna go and get myself some fluid ducts and i'm also gonna go get myself some more fluid ducts actually since we're a little bit low actually there we go so i've just got myself a stack of fluid ducts and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to really, you know, not very neatly at all, um, get myself a, a bit of a piping system going around these trees, just to basically um, get extract all of the resin out of these arboreal extractors. Now, I should probably mention that the resin that comes out of these trees, you basically have an unlimited supply of it. But as, you don't get an awfully lot amount per tick. So if you want to do this on a, you know, a bigger scale, you will obviously need quite a lot of trees and arboreal extractors. But for early game, about two, three, maybe four trees is definitely going to be enough. And that was definitely enough for me in my Plum Lab series. So once you've hooked up all of your fluid ducts in this sort of fashion, so they've all sort of looped around. In fact, I might just put one more around just in case. I'm also probably going to get myself a couple of servos, actually, just to make sure I have enough for the processes that are, you know, later down the line. So ideally, what you're probably going to want to do is pipe all of your stuff into some sort of tank. So I've just got myself a quick portable tank from Thermal Expansion and I'm just going to plonk this guy down here. Seems a good place as any, let's quickly set it to daytime. And as you can see guys, he's now filling up with resin. So I'll show you it, the resin in here, but you wouldn't really be able to see it because it's just getting purely extracted into this tank. So we're getting a fair amount of it as you can probably see. And what you're going to need is something called a fractioning still. And I believe it's from Thermal Expansion. Yes, so the fractioning still from Thermal Expansion, here we go. Turns out I already had some in my inventory. I'm going to plunk this guy down here. So I'm going to quickly get myself a fluid duct down and a servo. I was going to tell this guy to basically extract on no redstone signal. And there we go. So he's now filling this guy up, hopefully, if I set the side right. So I'll go into this inventory. This is basically the configuration of all the sides. So that's the back. That's the top. That's the left. Um... And yeah, so you basically get, get the idea of how this guy works. So, you'll, um, so I think this is the back. So I'm going to set this guy to be blue on the back. There we go. So blue only is at the back. He's now going to be extract or well, inserting fluids on the back. And to get this guy going, you are going to need some kind of kickstart of power, just as a bit of a word of warning for you guys. So I'd probably use something like a combustion generator. So I'll even get one now just to show you guys. So even something like a really basic like a combustion generator or a sterling generator just some really you know basic joke in fact that's probably not a combustion generator actually there's some sort of even like a and i'll try and find an example so something like a really basic you know like a sterling generator that i believe just runs on something like coal just to get this guy kind of kicked off so i'll stick that in there and he's just going to be generating a really you know small amount of rf that's just going to be enough to power this guy and um, you're not really going to need much like i said just a basic sterling generator and something like that will you know do really well for just powering this guy up now what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this guy to extract his fluid since he's going to be producing tree oil for us 
and I really hope he's not outputting. Yeah, it's not. Cause I think I made a bit of a mistake before where he was outputting back into that pipe. So when he does one operation, he's basically going to produce, produce a little bit of tree oil, and he's got a 50% chance of another product in here, which can actually be burnt as well. So you're getting a two in one basically in terms of the products. So I'm going to get myself a quick fluid duct, and I'm going to quickly make sure this guy doesn't interact by right-clicking on his interaction with a crescent hammer. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself, say, about two or three combustion generators. Does that seem like a cool num number, guys? I think that seems like a cool number. So I'll get my crescent hammer back, and I really hope you aren't inserting any of your oils there. No, we didn't, which is good. So I'm going to go get myself some fluid ducts, and I'm going to hook these guys up like so. Now I'm going to have to be very quickly with this, just so to make sure those guys don't interact. So what should be happening now is if I set this guy to extract his fluids on the right, hopefully what he should be doing is he should be extracting all of his tree oil, and yep, there we go, so it's now being evenly distributed, well, fairly evenly distributed, into these uh, compression dynamos. Now to complete the compression dynamos off, you are going to need some s source of coolant. Now water is probably going to be your best bet since it's you know, cheap and easy and it's basically infinite if you use an aqueous accumulator. So you want to dig yourself an area that's just basically like this and stick this guy down like so. You're gonna need three buckets of water so I'll just go and nick myself up another bucket of water from over here real quick. And I'm gonna stick this guy down here. As you can see he basically just generates an infinite amount of water now. So I'll stick this guy in here. And I should probably stop these guys from interacting, actually, since that's kind of broken the system. So I think, because I've derped, like, make sure you don't do that derp, guys. So what I'll do is I'll just real quick, you know, replace these pipes. You know, no biggie. No, there's not really much of a problem with this happening. So let me do that again. So you've got your tree oil. And I just need to make sure these guys don't touch or anything. So I think what I'm tempted to say do is quickly break that second stick that there okay so I think what I'm gonna do guys is because I keep having problems with this I'm gonna cut the video here and I'll be right back okay guys I'm not gonna lie that was pretty painful to do I think I had to reroute a few pipes so for most I think general advice I'd say from this tutorial is don't build your pipes too close to each other like this otherwise you can have major major problems with stuff happening like this for example so yeah, the problems fixed so now the systems all self-contained but like I said I definitely make sure you're you know using you know, not having pipes and stuff too close to each other, so you end up with like contamination in your pipes and stuff. So I, sh I can now probably get rid of this sterling generator since this guy has, you know, a fair amount of power. I say I'm pretty confident I can now get myself a capacitor bank, say so stick him down here, and I can connect up these compression dynamos and hook these guys up. So I'll say on the front, we'll I'll click on him to make him an input, and from the back. I'll click on his configuration again and make sure he's outputting from the back. So this guy should now be getting some power. You can, you should be getting some power. Okay, guys, I understand where I derped there. That wasn't my capacitor bank or anything. That was my wiring. So if I stick this guy down again and I set, if I right click him to make him input and right click him to make him an output, there we go. He's now getting some power. But you're probably, probably wondering, hey, we've got some rosin in here that doesn't seem to be doing much. What are we going to do with that? Well, but you should ask. The rosin can also be used if I get myself some item ducts. The rosin can basically be used as a, it's kind of like a byproduct. Like your tree oil, oil is going to be your main goal with this, but as a kind of, I suppose, a bit of a byproduct, you can have. Um, you can basically have sort of like rosin production. So I'm just going to get myself a steam dynamo from thermal expansion, and I'm going to plonk this guy down here, and I'm also probably going to, you know, wrench him so he's facing towards that conduit there. I'll also do that just so it looks a little bit neater. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself an item duct. I'm going to say that from the top I want the orange to be at the top. So the orange is going to be at the top and I'm going to say item duct him into there. Now I know this is a little bit messy guys. Like I said you probably will want uh, your system to look a little bit neater than mine. So I'm going to get myself a servo and I'll say I want it to extract items from the top. So hopefully what we should be getting is the rosin should be being extracted from the top in due, due uh, time. So there we go guys, now I've got the right dynamo down at least. Why are you facing the wrong way? So if I make this guy face the correct way real quick, and I also make this item duct to work, what should now be happening is the rosin should now be getting extracted out of here, which it was until it derped. 
So it's now going to go back, as you can see there, and it's going to be going into the Steam Dynamo. Now, one last thing, obviously, the Steam Dynamo is going to need is some water. So I'm just going to go get my fluid ducts again real quick. And I'm going to really kind of messily stick this guy here and go straight over here and collect up to the water supply. So there you go. This guy now has a supply of rosin directly from the um, fractioning still. He's got a water supply infinitely from the aqueous accumulator, which doesn't require any power or anything. And yeah, if I look at the vibrant capacitor bank, we're now gaining a little bit of power per tick. So that's 140 RF continually per tick. Now, you know, all these um, dynamos up and running, they've all got some tree oil, tree oil in. Except for one at the end. We just haven't quite got enough of a backlog yet for any of that to work. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the setup, guys. I think that's basically everything there is to show you guys, and that's everything that there really is to this early game setup. I just want to apologise, you know, for the fact that it was all messy and stuff. It has taken me a couple of attempts to get this working. But yeah, I think you'll probably want to, you know, make this, your setup a little bit neater than mine. But yeah, I think that's basically a functional setup to get, you know, an infinite amount of early game power. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. Goodbye from Boat and Plum. Um.